artist, Mr. Brad here. Today we're going to be doing Nessie Funko Pop style. So if you want to draw along, grab a piece of paper and a pencil, and let's go to the drawing board. Okay, everybody, here we are at the drawing board. You can see I've got my paper already set up. And for our Nessie, I'm going to use this little cool Funko Pop reference picture. You can see that I already picked out a couple colors and a color pencil, because I'm going to add some color to this later. But for now, you just need him. I'll send him off to the side there so we can see him. You need a pencil, and this is a mechanical pencil. If you don't have this, just any pencil you got around the house will do great. I've got a kneaded eraser, as in knead bread, because you can knead this and shape it to whatever you want. You can get into little details and things if you want to use it for an eraser. And then I also have this um, gum eraser. It's kind of like a hard block of rubber, and that's used for clean up and stuff at the end. If you don't have either of those, it's okay. It doesn't matter. Any eraser that you have will do, except there's pink ones on the end of a regular pencil. Those things are terrible, so don't use those or you'll have a mess they spread pink all over the place. All right, are you ready to draw? Now let's do it. Okay, the first thing we want to do is just kind of rough out the basic shapes of him. And one thing I tell my students all the time is don't press heavy. If you press heavy and you draw a line and you don't like it and you have to erase it, it's going to get all smeared and you're going to have grooves in your paper where you drew the lines. So draw loose and light all the time. And if I'm looking at Nessie right here, we can see that his face is based on two shapes. One, a circle. Okay, and then if you look around his mouth here, an oval. So we're going to draw both of those first. Okay, remember, keep it loose and light. So I'm just going to do a circle first. Uh, yay big. And if you can see that, you just see that I'm kind of sketching it in. And then I'm going to make a bigger one. I'm going to come down all about halfway. And I'm just going to kind of shape out this part right here. And I'm going to just kind of rough that out into an oval. And it just comes out a little bit. You can see where it just comes out a little bit from his head. So if I'm looking at this, then I just kind of want to shape that in. Look at this. Okay. And it doesn't look like much now except a bunch of scribbles, but we'll tighten that up as we go. Okay, now that I know that I kind of have this shape, we're going to start to define it a little bit. So I'm going to look at the middle of his head right here, and I'm going to draw a little V, just like he's got here in the middle. And that's where his little back scale ridge is coming down or whatever. And this time I'm going to draw a little more solid because I'm a little more confident in my skills, whatever that shape is. And then I'm going to start down here, and I'm going to go from here, and I'm going to come up and I'm going to curve it around kind of got a curve there, and if you look at his eyeball, it's nice and round. This curve matches the same curve as his eye. So kind of think about that while, while you're doing it. So I'm going to start down here where I made this other oval. And I'm just going to come up very lightly. And I'm going to come over from this side. And I'm just going to make a little bit of a curve there. Okay? And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Actually, I'm going to start at the top here. I'm gonna come over and I'm going to come about whatever distance this looks. I'm going to try to match that over here. Try to get it as close as I can, at least for now. Remember, this is still in the rough stages, so we'll go from there. I think it looks pretty cool. Okay, so now I'm going to come back to this line on his mouth or his muzzle, or whatever you want to call this here. And I'm going to define this a little bit more because I just want that arch to kind of match. Okay. And so now we're going to look down here at this part where it comes down. And you notice it's kind of square. Like if you look at this, it's kind of squared off and then the square ends is, are cut off into a, into a shoot, what do I want to say? Like a curve. So if, if I actually make this into a block, you can see that it's just a rectangle and the edges are cut off, like rounded off, okay? So let's do that. I'm going to make a little rectangle out of this. And I'm going to cut the ends off. I've got this little 
archway here. So this is going to make it easier for me. So I'm going to cut that off. I shouldn't say cut. I should say round off. I'm going to round this one off. Then I'm going to do the same thing over here. I round it off. Come down. And then I'm going to come up. I'm going to round that off too. Okay, now it's starting to look like something. Now down here, it's got a little bit, it juts out just a little bit. So I'm going to kind of make a line down from the middle. And then about right here in the center, I'm just going to gradually tie that in. It's got a little bit of a curve to it. Okay, sort of like that. Now I'm going to take my kneaded eraser and I'm just going to shape it into a point. If you don't have it again, you can just use whatever you've got. But I'm going to clean this up in here a little bit, take some of these extra lines out so I can see what's going on. And I'm going to take this rectangle out of here. Now we're going to go over all this in the end and we're going to darken these lines and give them some color and everything. But right now we just want to try to get the basics. All right, so we got that. So let's go, keep going. And we're going to do his mouth. And you can see it's kind of a almost a U shape, and then it just kind of gradually tapers off and comes back into a U again um, on the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm, we're just going to do this part first. Because since we already have this down here, so now all we want to do is we just want to come in. If you can divide this, imagine it's kind of divided into three sections. Okay, I'll make it a little darker so you can see it better on video. So what we want to do is we want to start from one side and go over to the other, and we just want to make that kind of curve. Okay, and again, it doesn't have to be perfect yet because we're going to clean it up later. But from here now, now I can make this line. So I'm just going to come right to here where it comes to the end, and I'm going to angle it up. Like it is. And it looks like he's got a little bit of a the corner of his mouth there. So I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to come over to the other side. I'm going to do the same thing. It looks like he's smiling, doesn't it? He must think that seaweed's pretty good. It looks good. Okay, this needs to come up just a hair. So I'm going to bring this up. And remember, guys, since you're drawing nice and light, you can come in at any time and clean up your lines. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. He's got that little corner of his mouth turned down too. Now, I don't know how much you can see up here. He's got a little nostril here, and a little nostril here. It looks like it's got a little ridge line on it. So we're not going to do that yet because we want to get the eyes in first because the eyes kind of line up with the back side of the, of the nostrils. So that'll help us put them in place. So to get the eyes right, what we want to do, I'm going to take these lines out of here. Then I'm going to clean this up a little bit too because I'm pretty happy with how this looks. If you're happy with yours too, you can take some of those lines out. And I'm going to take these guidelines out too. All right, that's good enough for now. So there's a couple ways you can do this. One, you can see that the shapes of his eyes are just circles. And you can just pretty much just rough in a circle. Okay, and you can start loose and light, loose. Okay, and remember his eyes are kind of close together. So if you come up here and look at this, um, his little ridge bone or whatever that is, fin if you want to call it, on the top. If you come up to the top corner here and you draw a line kind of straight down on both sides, you'll see that the eyeballs are pretty much in line with those lines. So you can come down and make yourself two little drop lines. And you can see that that's where his eyes go. Now, his eyes really close down here to the top of this. So I'm going to have to move mine down here. So let me try that again. But I'm going to keep this line, just so I know. And I'm going to look here and see that distance. It's not very much. I should only bring this down a little more. Okay, and then once I get kind of get that in, I can go from here. And now I can shape this out into a circle. Now I'm going to show you guys a little trick you can do. If you have something called a circle guide, all right, I'm going to go ahead and put this other one in too, because I kind of know where it is now. 
And you don't have to do a whole circle at once, but you can. Or you can kind of shape it out a little bit as you go. Now, if you have a circle guide, it's a little plastic thing that looks like this. And if you go to Hobby Lobby or Michaels or any place that sells art supplies, you can get one of these. It's usually in the place where you get architect stuff, like compasses and T-squares and that kind of thing. And they have all kind of different plastic guides to make shapes. And that's how a lot of pros get perfect circles and things like that in their drawings. These are only a few bucks. I think they're less than $7. I'm not sure the last time I bought one. But anyway, if you've got one and you're pretty happy with the size of the eyes, I'm going to come in here. I'm just going to take mine and I'm going to find the circle that's closest to what I've already got. And I had a pretty good circle there if you look at it. And I'm just going to keep that straight and I'm just going to go in here and, whoop, and I'm going to thicken in the eye for a perfect circle. Now see how perfect that is compared to this one? So I'm just going to place it on here again, make sure I got the right one. There it is, 15th, and I'm just going to come straight over and make sure that it is level. Okay, actually, I'm going to do that right. Here's a T-square, and this one's nice because I can see through it. If you don't have one, just line up the best you can, but if I do have one, I can put it right here. And I'm just going to make a little line from the bottom of this eye to the bottom where this eye should be. Well, that was really close anyway. I probably could have just freehanded that in. But I want you to see the circle, circle guide. Okay, so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put the bottom of the circle right on the line. And then I'm going to use that other line that we made from the fin to come down. And that's where I'm going to bring the inside of the circle. So... And I'm just going to draw that in, and there you go, boom. So now I can take my eraser very lightly, go around, and I can get these lines out of here. Okay. Hmm. He's starting to look like our little Nessie Funko Pop guy here. I'm pretty cool. I'm pretty cool? I am pretty cool, but I'm also pretty excited that he's starting to look good. Okay, now we can come down and do these little nostrils, because they're pretty close, too. So if we still had that line, I'll put that back in so you guys can see it. So now his nostrils are just little, um, almost like a rainbow that doesn't finish, okay? So it's like the start of a rainbow on either side. This one comes out this way. This one comes out that way. So I'm just going to come down in here. And just a little bit, you can see where the top of it is, and it comes down. So I'm just going to come here, and I'm just going to put that little line in. Look at this. And then I'm going to come over on the other side, and I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And it comes down like that. I'll give this one a little more of an arch. And then you can see he's got that little, just the top of his nostril there. So I'm going to take out our guidelines. And I'll put them in. Okay. What do you think so far? Do you like yours? Let me see. Hey, that looks pretty good. Okay, well, I'm pretty happy with mine too. So now let's go to the little marks on his head. And you can just kind of see where these go and kind of just rough them in the shapes. So this is kind of like a, a U shape and then it kind of squares off at the top. And it's, it's right down below and just off a little bit to the right of, of our fin. So I'm just going to define that line a little more. And I'm going to start just over here a little bit. And these don't have to be perfect. I mean, if you want them to be, they can be. But I'm just going to look at it. He's spotty. So I'm going to see what's going on here. And if you look at this edge, it comes over a little bit farther into the eye. So that's pretty good there. I'm going to bring this down a little more. Okay. And then the other one's next to it. So there's a little bit of a gap in between them. And, oh, let's do this one up here first. So there's this little one right up here. And it just kind of comes over from that center point, turns up, and then right next to it, there's another little one. Okay, now there's a little gap here below it, and then this uh, spot comes almost all the way to the end of this other little one. So we're just gonna start here. We're gonna come over this far. 
And then we're just going to come down a little bit and just kind of shape this out. So it's kind of down and over. Okay. And oh, it's a little smaller than that one, the big one. So I'm going to make this big one a little bit bigger because you can see it drops down below it here. So don't be afraid to make changes as you go. And I'm going to bring it out a little bit more. Okay, that looks pretty cool. Now we got one more over on this side. I'm just going to put that in so there's a gap here. And it kind of bends off of this one a little bit. And then it comes over and curves back up to his head where you don't see it anymore. And then on this side, we've got another one that comes out from the fin. And it comes almost this far. So I can even come over here and use that as a marker. And then it curves back up close to the fin. And we've got a gap here. It's almost like laying bricks, you know? You see the mortar lines in between the bricks. But we're using spots. This one comes way up here. And then you can just see the very tippy top of another one at the top. So I'm just going to rough that one in. And then this, this little one here kind of comes down below it a little bit. And curves comes back up. <laughs> He's cutie. Okay, so now we've got that in. So let's come over and do his, his ear fins. And if you take a look here, the middle one, these are, he's got like three spines here. The middle one comes out right where the head meets the mouth. So I'm just going to look at this. And I'm just going to make a line out like this. And then I'm going to come up a little bit. There's a little bit of a gap. Just come up a little. And then I'm going to go up for the next one. And then there's one down. And if you can imagine, they all meet together in here somewhere. Okay, so I'm looking at this. I'm looking at how this would come into here. And this one is going to come, and it doesn't stick out as much. But it's going to kind of be right in here. Okay, so now let's flesh this out a little bit. So all I'm going to do is on both sides of that line, I'm just going to come out however far I think it needs to be because I'm not measuring this out. And I'm going to put a line on the top and bottom of it and just kind of make that shape. The one on the top, uh, I got to be careful with this gap right here, so I don't want to put too much. It's going to come out, so about right here. Okay, and a lot of this is eyeballing it, guys, so you kind of get a sense of how you want this thing to look and how it looks best for you. Okay, so we're going to come down this far, and let's see if I draw a line straight up. It's not quite as far out as this one, so I'm going to take a look at this. I'll just put a little cheat line in there. And I'm just going to shorten this one a little bit. Okay. Okay, that's cool. And now he's got some fins here. So this one just kind of starts toward the bottom of his mouth. It just kind of comes out like this. And then this one kind of whoops. So they curve right into each other. Nice and easy like that. Okay, now let's do the same thing on the other side. Again, we're going to start here in the middle, center. And if you want them all to be the same size on both sides, you can just take a ruler and start your ruler anywhere on any line. So this is at six, and it almost goes to seven, so it's not quite an inch. So I'm just going to come in that little bit. I'm just going to make a line so I know how long that one's going to be. And on, on this side, I'll just do them one at a time so you can see it. So a little bit of, over above it, and then come around a little bit below the line. Okay, and then this one, if I come in here and measure it, I'll just start from the 8. Okay, so it's about the same as this one. So I'm just going to start in here, come to about here. And then I can just use that as my mark. Oh, actually, I'm going to do this. 
remember guys, these are our practice and our guidelines. These are not our final lines. We are just making now what we like to call a rough sketch. Let's see if I come over from here. Let's bring it close, but I'll come out here. Okay. Actually, you can see this where it comes, it's got a little flip here, and same thing on the inside. So I just add that little, that little line in there. And I can't see it on the top and bottom. So I'll just go with that. Okay, now for his seaweed, we're not going to worry about that yet because we want to do that last. So for now, we're going to come down to his body. And if you take a look at his body without fins, okay. He's got a big curving line. It's like a big, if you just practice it on your paper a couple of times without taking your hand off the table, you can feel that line. Okay, see how I'm doing that? And, the, and we'll worry about the top in a minute, but let's do the let's do the bottom one first. So let me get that curve back. Okay. So I'm gonna come in here and about in the center, and then I'm just gonna come over a little bit because he's got some body down here. So I'm gonna come down, nice and easy. So that feels pretty good, and then I'm gonna make that curve. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Let me see. Yeah. Okay, and at the top, of his neck again, we're going to come over this time over to this side. And this one we're going to shape out a little, a little different. Okay, so there's a little curve right here. So you want it to curve, and then it's going to come into his back. And if I draw right through the seaweed, you can see that how that curve goes. So we're going to go over, and we're going to go, we're going to make a hump, and then we're going to bring it down for his tail. down for his tail. Okay, and now I'm just going to kind of shape this curve out. And his tail's rounded, so I'm just going to kind of round it off. It might not be far enough. Let's see. I'm going to come a little bit farther here. And that's the nice thing about doing a preliminary sketch like this, is you can change your lines all the time until you get them just right for what you want. Okay, let me see how he's looking here. So I'm gonna rough this out a little more. I think I want this to curve just a little more here. Okay, and this line, I'll bring it a little bit more like that. Okay, so now I can take out some of my lines that I didn't like before. And you can see how his little body is shaped and I think that looks pretty cool so let's go down to his well let's do one more line first he's got this other line here that um, separates his pattern colors and things from the rest of his body so he's got like this lighter belly color and we want that to show up too so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna come in a little bit from this line and we're gonna follow this curved line again down until it tapers off into nothing in his tail. Okay, so let's come in a little bit, and we're gonna follow this curve. So now I'm just gonna get a little roughy, roughy. We're gonna keep coming down. That's gonna help us with our fins too. Now the lower this line goes, as it follows around his tail, it, it starts to get thinner. Okay, so we're gonna get thinner. Thinner, oh, maybe too thin, 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 thin. Okay, so it's gone. All right, let me take that off. Now, his fins are connected to this line, so it's a good thing we put this in here. So we're going to come around. And you can see right where it really starts to sweep into the turn. Oops, that's where we're going to go for his fins. So I'm going to come right down to about here. And his fin, if you trace over a line, you can really kind of see how it's shaped. So it kind of goes, oop, oop, it's like two curves. 
So I'm going to take the first curve, and it comes a little bit out past his body. Okay, and then it curves over again. Right? And then this kind of flattens out at the bottom. And it just comes back. Kind of imagine if he's standing on it or swimming. And then it comes back into his body. Okay, and you can look at that and see how close you are to it. And if you're happy with it, you're good. And then his back fin, you can't see all of it because it's blocked off by his body. But we're going to come up into here, just above where that little break is in his top fin. That's where we're going to start him. And we're going to come straight out. And we're not going to go as far because if I draw a line at the top here, it's very, very close, but not quite to this end. So if you make an imaginary line up here, you just want to stop a little bit before you get to that. And what that does is it makes it look like that fin is back in space a little bit. All right, let's take the back fin, and we're going to follow this curve again. So we're going to keep following it from the first fin, and we're going to come back not too far. It doesn't really go back that far until we get to his back fin. So we're going to find a place to stop and start. So we're going to stop this line and start his fin. We're just going to come down, and right below his body, that's where we're going to make it bend. Okay, and then that line straightens out a little bit till you get to this little back part of his fin. We're going to round that off and come back in like this. So now his fin will actually, the line will come up a little bit above it. If you can see, here's this line, and then it, the fin comes in like it's a little bit higher up on his body. Okay, that looks pretty good, but I'm going to make mine a little bit bigger. So I want to stand back and look at it. I think it needs to be a little bit bigger. Okay, and that's pretty good. You don't see his other fin on the other side because it's completely blocked out by his body. All right, so now we're going to clean this up a little bit. Let's take our eraser, and where the flipper crosses in front of his body, you can't see that line anymore. So I'm going to take that out. And I'm even going to take out this line where it connects to this coloring on his body, because it's all going to be the same color. And then in this fin, I'm going to take everything out. Okay. I'm also going to clean this up a little bit. Okay. Well, this almost looks like it even, you can see a little fold in it. So I'm going to throw that in there. I just noticed that. All right, Nessie, the monster from the deep. Okay, let's go back up now. Let's look at all this like seaweed and stuff that she's got in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at this line, and we're going to kind of see what this shape is. It's almost like a shield shape. It's almost like this. So I'm going to come in. Actually, let's start on the outside of her mouth so we can see where it's at. And I'm just going to come down, and we're just going to make a little shape. The same shape as what this outside line would be. And it comes down a decent way into her body, where that little hump is. So, let me come down a little bit farther. And then we'll see how wide this thing is. It comes over a pretty good bit. You can see where her little rounded off part is. It's just where it starts to go into the straight parts. So, I'm going to clean that up a little bit. I'm going to bring this back up. There's a little gap there in her neck. Actually, let's go over this way a little bit. Because I can see a gap in there. And this one, too. Okay. So let me clean this up a little bit. Take out some of these lines. And you can take out the line at the bottom of her mouth, too, because you don't see that anymore. Wouldn't it be cool if you really saw Nessie? I saw this movie once when I was a kid. And these people were out in this boat, and they didn't think they were going to find Nessie. They heard about the rumors, and all of a sudden, she just rose up out of the water and flipped the boat. Scared their pants off me, because I thought she was going to eat them. Anyway, I don't remember the movie. Oh, wait a second. Maybe it was The Secret Life of Sherlock Holmes. 
I was in the 60s, so I'm a, I don't quite remember. But anyway, it was cool, and it, it just made me fantasize all the time about you know capturing a photograph of Nessie or seeing her, and it would just be awesome. Okay, back to our drawing. So now we can see that these are just made up of little leaves, and I'm just going to come in here, and I'm just going to rough these in a little bit just to get us started. So this first one kind of comes down the way it is. And then this one, like that. It's almost like she's got teeth hanging out or some funky green teeth. And then we're just going to do that all the way down. You can see that once you get this first row, if you come down in between two, you can see one like crosses in the middle. So I'm going to come in between two, and make a little line here, and then I'm just going to make this the next leaf. So it's kind of in between each one. This one's got one down below it. And all I'm doing right now is looking at the shapes that are in there. And just shaping them out real, real loosely. This part doesn't have to be perfect unless you're trying to get an exact specific Funko Pop replica, replica drawing. And for the seaweed, I don't really think that's the ultimate goal here. We just want a pretty cool looking picture of Nessie. But if you do, you'll just keep trying to make those leaves the best that you can. And I guess I'm pretty close anyway, so let's just keep it going. Did any of you guys ever see Nessie? Anybody ever been to Scotland? Let me know down in the comments. Or here's a better question, which what I want to call it, undiscovered creature would you like to see more? Would you rather see Bigfoot or Nessie or maybe another um, creature like uh, the Mothman in West Virginia? If there's any West Virginia people here watching this, let me know in the comments below. I work in Wheeling, West Virginia at the Stifle Fine Arts Center, where I'm the Director of Education. And I teach classes like this all the time. So if you are you live in the area, uh, take a class and check us out. You'll have a lot of fun. OK, all of a sudden, I don't know what this is. Oh, this is out. That's what it is. OK, this one is here. So this one comes down. And this one comes over. There we go. Okay, so now we got something that looks like some seaweed hanging out of her mouth. And we're going to go from there. We're going to go to all these little bumps, these little ridges, this probably bony fins on, the, on her back. So this first one, you can see, it's pretty easy. It doesn't even make a whole lump. Right where her mouth is, and, and it comes down and meets her neck. And it's just a little one. So we're going to go in like that and make one. And then there's a little gap from it to the next one. But you can see most of that one. And it's actually down here in the curve a little bit. So I'm a little bit off here in my drawing. So I'm going to make this curve come out a little bit more. And I'm going to fix that. That's better. And the farther you get in your rough sketch, the more you can see what you need in relation to what it looks like here. And you can just kind of keep tweaking it as you go. So I'm going to make that. There's actually a full lump there, but I really like the seaweed. So I'm just going to leave that and come from here. Okay, and then off the back of the seaweed, you can almost imagine another one here behind it. So if you make that little gap in between, you come up, and then you start the drawing. You can come down. And then there's just a series of them. If you have your circle guide, you can actually find one that fits the shapes that you're making, the size of the shape. And there's a pretty good one, so it's 5 16. So I'm going to use that, and I'm going to line up the line, the black line here and the black line here for this. 
and then make a little gap in between. Let me see what that looks like. Ooh, that's cool. Okay, so I'm going to keep going with that all the way down to the bottom. You're going to have to rough yours in. But you'll see how cool it is to use a circle guide. It makes your life a lot easier. I'll just do those two. I'm going to go with you guys and keep roughing them in. And as you do get farther away, they might get a little bit smaller, especially these two. So you want to be careful that as you go. And remember, keep those lines loose and light because that way you can always erase them and fix them as you get down. Now when they get down lower here, they look like they're, they're touching. They're a lot closer to each other. So maybe as you go down her back, there's not as much of a gap. I'm going to fill this one in a little bit too. Okay, so make sure that they're almost touching now. Okay, and remember, you can stop and pause this video anytime you need to. So you can catch up. Or if you want, sometimes it's even a good idea to watch it the first time and then, then go back and draw long. Okay, my tail wasn't long enough, I realized when I was getting down to these last two. So I'm going to. This one actually comes into the tail a little bit. And this comes out like a use. Okay. So see guys, even the pros make mistakes as they go. The important thing is to fix them before your final drawing so that you eliminate any, any mistakes. Hey, look at that. I think we got a pretty good Nessie there, huh? How'd yours come out? Good, I hope. All right, there's only one more thing to do before we finalize our lines and that's to add in these patterns and I'm going to speed it up for this part because you don't really need technical instructions you can see on her where they go and you can pause this video right here and you can kind of look off of this as your guide to rough in those spots so I'm going to switch over to some speed photography here and I'll catch up with you guys on the other side Okay, have fun. Okay, guys, there you have it. There's our Nessie. How'd yours come out? I think it looks pretty good. I forgot one thing, and that was his fins over here on his ears. So let me put those in right now while we're talking. And in a second, we're just going to go down, and we're going to clean up our lines. Okay. Let me just put his little webbing in very roughly. Okay, and now we're going to do the fun part. And you can either use your pencil and you can darken these lines up, or you can take a black pen like this. This is a Sharpie pen, and it's got a, a very fine point on it. And you can just go over the whole thing in Sharpie pen. Don't do a bunch of erasing when you're when you're doing your Sharpie pen because once you put this ink down if you try to erase it it will smear and ruin your drawing. So you got to be sure that your lines are pretty much in a place that you want them and remember to not like draw these little lines in between here. Okay we want them to look just like this. Okay, so I'm going to speed this up again, and I'm going to do my, all my lines, because that'll give me a nice final black and white drawing, and from there, if I decide to color, I can color it or do whatever I want to do, and I have all the lines in place, or at least as close as, as I could get them, just by looking off of this guy, without spending 12 hours on it. So here we go. I'm going to speed this up again so you can watch me do it quicker, and I want you to have fun with yours, too. Okay, let's go. Once your pen and ink is all dry, and you know it's dry, let it sit for a few minutes or 
wave your paper back and forth in there so it dries. Then you can go back in with your eraser. You can either use your kneaded eraser if you have one. But remember I said I had this gum eraser. This one is really good for erasing. And I'm just going to go over everything except his spots with an eraser to, to clean it up. Okay. So, ta-da. Guess what? I decided to color with colored pencil after all. So I left his eyes out because I want to be able to use some white and black in there to make his eyes look like they have a little shine to him. And I left his spots untraced also because I'm just going to do that in pure color and shading. Well, there's our Nessie, everybody. All drawn and ready for a swim. Want to see it all colored up and taken up a notch? Here we go. One, two, three. Ah! What do you think? I added a little water here. I think it looks cool, like he's floating. Maybe I'll put the little castle behind him or something later. But for now, I'm pretty happy with it. I really hope you like this project. If you do, please give it a thumbs up. And maybe even subscribe if you want to do some more cool art with me. Thanks again. See you next time. God bless.